In this tutorial we're going to look at the permutations functions available in Slippery Chicken. So we're going to look at the specific functions and methods permutations, inefficient permutations, inefficiently permutate, shuffle and move repeats. Slippery Chicken offers a variety of deterministic and random functions for permutating data. The simplest is the permutations function. This produces a systematic list of all the possible permutations of a set of consecutive integers beginning with zero. The order of the permutations returned will be the same each time, so this is a deterministic algorithm. For example, if we call permutations with the argument 4, we'll get the resultant list now seen on your screen. If we build this into a mini-example using Make Slippery Chicken, you can see how we could use permutations to order the set map we can see here we've got a set palette of 0, 1, 2, 3, that's four sets. And we're going to use the permutations for algorithm to order those. Bear in mind, however, that the returned list of permutations for contains sublists of those four numbers permutated. So we want to flatten those to create all those numbers in a single flat list in order to use in the set map. Inefficient permutations is a random algorithm, quite different to permutations, but essentially returning the same kind of result, albeit in a rather inefficient manner, hence the name. So this returns a shuffled list of all the possible permutations of a set of consecutive integers beginning with zero, shuffled here being the difference between inefficient permutations and permutations. There are some keyword arguments available here. For instance, max, which is an integer, and this represents the maximum number of permutations to return. Skip, which is also an integer, which specifies the number of permutations to skip at the beginning. And then the fix keyword, which allows us to shuffle with the fixed random seed. So this introduces a new concept here in Slippery Chicken. This is a random procedure, but sometimes in music in particular, where we're developing pieces by repeating the same call to the make slippery chicken function again and again, sometimes we want the results of a random number call or a sequence of random number calls to return in some kind of fixed order, unpredictable perhaps to the user, but fixed each time it's run. So we can use a fixed random seed by specifying t to the fix argument here. That makes sense then of the skip argument here. If we want to call this function several times, we may want to call it with a different skip argument each time to get a different but predictable and repeatable list each time. So for instance, if we call inefficient permutations with the argument 4, the max keyword argument of 7, skip of 2 and fix t, we should always, in your Lisp implementation, get the following results. This will, however, vary between Lisp implementations, and it may change between different versions of Lisp. So if you really want to fix the order of random numbers, you should probably save it to a file and load that file. That's the safest way to do it for future proofing. Let's try a little example here with an inefficient permutation. It's essentially the same as the previous example. We're going to create the set map from a call to inefficient permutations to order the four sets in the set palette. Related to this is the function inefficiently permutate. 
This returns a shuffled list of all the permutations of an original list. So there's a new list here returned by default as a flat list containing the elements of the list you pass to the function. Now beware, these lists get long very fast. If you pass an original list of eight or more elements, the results will automatically be written to a file because it will take a very long time and a lot of memory to generate all of the possible permutations here. We have similar keyword arguments here to inefficient permutations. Max, which is an integer again, which specifies the maximum number of permutations to return. Skip, which is the number of permutations to skip. The fixed keyword argument, which again sets whether we should use the fixed random seed or true random, true in computer science terms at least. And then sublists. This keyword argument will determine whether we return the original permutated lists as sublists or as a flat list, flat lists being the default, as mentioned. So if we call it inefficiently permutate with the list A, B, C, D, max 7, skip 2, and fix T, we get this result. Again, this could be different if you're using a different lisp from the one we were using, which was SBCL. Here's another example similar to the previous one where we're going to order the set map by inefficiently permutating the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. Shuffle is another useful function which we can use to create a random ordering of a list or a segment of a list. The keyword arguments here are start, which is integer and zero based. This specifies the first element of the list to be shuffled. End, which is similar to start, but specifies the last element of the list to be shuffled. Then there's a copy keyword, which allows you to make a copy of a list before shuffling it so that we do non-destructive processing. We've also got the fix keyword, which is familiar by now, which specifies whether we're going to use fixed randomness or true computer science randomness. And then a reset argument, which allows us to reset our random state if we want to do this so that we can restart with the numbers we got the first time we called the function. Here's an example where we shuffle the numbers 1 to 7, starting at 1 and ending at 5. So you can see that 6 and 7 are still in their original position. Again, here's a, a simple example of a violin piece where we're going to actually do something quite new. We're going to have pitch sequences created by shuffling the numbers we have in this list here that you see on your screen. So we're going to actually create 31 shuffles of this list to create 31 different pitch sequences, which we'll then use to create this piece that you can now see and hear. Move repeats moves, where possible, any consecutively repeated items in a list. It does this by moving items to the right, not to the left. When no non-repeating place can be found, the element is moved to the very end of the list, whether a repeat would be created there or not. This can actually be applied to simple lists and lists with sublists. And if used with sublists, the last element of each sublist is checked for repetition, with the first element of the next. So for instance, if we call move repeats with the list you see on your screen now, where we can see there's repeating elements 3 and 8, we get this ret returned result here where the repeating numbers 3 and 8 are now in different positions. If we call move repeats with these sublists, we get the following result where you can see that the C at the end of the first sublist and at the beginning of the second sublist is now moved so that we follow the ABC sublist with DEF and the CAB that was in position 2 is now in position 3.
So we have an example here which moves further on from our previous example to inefficiently permutate the set map references, but to move any repeats so that we don't have repeating harmonies.